It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Kansas City Mavericks assistant coach, Cole Schultz. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Brandon. Thanks for having me on today, bud. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to work in professional sports? Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of a convoluted path, like my entire career has been so far. Um, oddly enough, when I was about 14 years old, I wanted to be a priest and pro sports wasn't really on the radar. Um, and then, you know, it kind of happened organically. It was one of those situations where I was kind of planning on being an attorney when I was done playing youth hockey and done playing club in college. Um, but then when I became a junior and at the university of North Carolina, I got hurt with a concussion, um, and that's kind of when I started the coaching aspect of things. And it's kind of just been a whirlwind from there in terms of this is the path that I want to go on. And I've, I've been all in on it since. What was your time like playing college for North Carolina? It was a blast. Um, it's uh, like club hockey. It's, it's a different kind of hockey. That's for sure. Um, there's such discrepancies between players skill levels. And even I was one of the bad ones in college club. But um, it's one of those situations where, like, I got to have that college experience and continue playing the game that I love. Um, like, I wouldn't change it for the world in terms of the friendships that it brought me, the people that I got to meet, the places that we got to travel. Um, and, and kudos to Bud Johnston, who used to be the coach there. Um, he was great in terms of making sure that it felt like a high-level program in terms of the way that we traveled uh the buses the hotels like it was it was a really good experience for us and a lot of that was due to Bud. of course for my listeners that don't know what is the big difference between club hockey and like division one hockey i think it's kind of the same no matter what division you go to like the players are usually just bigger faster and stronger so <laughs> so i mean i i think the biggest thing with club to the division one level is the caliber of player in terms of talent but at the end of the day most of them are just better skaters and and they've got a little bit more poise and a little bit more sense and and that's why they play where they do and that's why club hockey is a great thing because not everyone's as gifted in those certain aspects of the game and have different loves and passions and want to pursue other things so for me club hockey was perfect but i mean the division one level is just a different animal What was your time like with the Carolina juniors for the Hurricanes? Oh, it was awesome. Um, So that was the first team that I coached with um, for a youth hockey team. And uh, Tim Silcox was the head coach. He was kind enough to bring me on as an assistant for a Bantame hockey team. Um, And we had a blast. Um, And like we had a great group of kids. We had a great group of parents. The following year, I was the head coach of a U16B travel team um, while playing in school. And that was a little bit of an adventure. There wasn't really the B-level hockey in North Carolina. So we were there playing against opponents that were way better than us or way worse than us. And so it was kind of just like a weird mix. And then um, my final year there, I coached another Bantam team. And I was the head coach of that team with uh, Terry Hoey as my assistant who uh, is still one of my really good friends today. And like that team was so much fun. And to be honest with you, it's the epitome of what youth hockey should have been and should always be like, it's, it's kids playing because they love it. It's parents just enjoying the ride as opposed to worrying about how is my kid going to get to division one or how is my kid going to play pro? It was legitimately like, everyone's just going to come to the rink and work hard. But then, like, there's life outside of the whole hockey aspect of things. Like, you hear horror stories of youth hockey, like, tournaments where 
parents don't book hotels with a pool because they don't want their kids to be tired. But at the end of the day, like for all these kids that aren't going to make it right, like they've got to have those memories and look back on hockey with such a fondness. And, and for us, like we always made sure we had a hotel with a pool and we did a tournament in Nashville and we got to take the kids down Broadway and all that stuff. So it's one of those things where if I could put a microcosm on what youth athletics and youth sports should look like, I would take that 14 U team that I had my last year there. Of course, playing as the Carolina Hurricanes travel team, were you able to play in PNC Arena where, of course, the Carolina Hurricanes do play? Yeah, we played uh, We played a couple of games there. Um, I, I actually played, and then when I was playing club in college, we played a few games there as well. Um, so that's always fun. The biggest thing there is that the lights are super bright. Um, so you actually, it's like, it's a weird adjustment period that you go through the first time that you're under such a facility. And then, um, and then, yeah, I think where else have, did I have the pleasure of playing? Uh, and then Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, um, I got to play on a couple of times and that was great as well. What was your time like as the director of hockey operations? Um, at Bemidji? Yes, Bemidji. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it was a blast. Um, so that was kind of my dipping my toes into working hockey professionally, right? Um, and I was fortunate enough to work for a man by the name of Tom Territory, who's a great individual and, and someone that I've, I'll greatly admire and respect for my entire life. And, and, you know, Bemidji is God's country. I, I think I've said it before and it's, it's cold, but like, if you love hockey and you love being surrounded by really good people, um, that just want to work hard and elevate their own status in professional or college hockey, like it was the place for me. And I think it's the place for anyone that gets the opportunity to go there. What were, what were some of your roles and responsibility as the director of hockey operations? Um, my biggest thing was video. Um, so Jeremy Kupal, who's now the head, like video coach for the Edmonton Oilers, he was the one that kind of started me off and trained me on how to do the video there. Um, as we continued to move on, I, I took over other responsibilities such as like post-game meal planning, um, pre-game meal planning, helping Tom out and whatever he needed, um, getting a little bit more in-depth with the pre-scout of our opponents. And then, you know, I, I just always folded towels with Toby at the end of the day if he had a whole bunch with who was our equipment manager. But other than that, it was, it was, it was pretty just video intensive. What was your time with the Maine University men's hockey team as the video coordinator and director of communications? That was uh, that was a crazy time in my life, to be honest with you. Uh, I was working by for a gentleman by the name of Red Gender in there. Um, and like most of the time when you read two titles for a job, it's they kind of match up for those they didn't. So it was kind of like working two full-time jobs at once. And it was a little hectic and a little crazy, but in terms of what I did, it was once again, a lot of video. Um, it was a version of analytics that we use in terms of player tracking and trying to establish trends at the collegiate level. And then the other side of it is there was a whole lot of marketing and community engagement strategy and, and media relations and all that stuff that went into it. So there were times when I'm at the rink and I've got to put my hockey hat on. And then there's other times where I'm putting like putting my sales hat on. So it was kind of an interesting go back and forth for, but it really prepared me just in terms of workload for going forward, just because of the amount of hours that it was, it took, it taught me how to establish routine. And, and it's something that I've carried with me since. What was it like to work for me hockey as they are pretty good? every year in hockey it was uh well to be honest with you we weren't very good my two years there um there's a lot of tradition and there's a lot of pride in that community so that's what made it so hard being there for a couple of down years for the program um just because people love the main black bears in that community like in terms of the presence that al fondarini gives the fan engagement like if i was a player looking to like where are the best fans or like, where am I going to have like the most exciting atmosphere? I think you'd be really hard pressed to find anywhere else in college hockey than on a night where they're playing either BUBC or UNH at Alphonse arena. Like it's just loud. It's rocking. It's the music's going, the band's playing. Um, 
it was just a great thing. Like I absolutely loved it. What was your time like with the stock hockey club as the video analyst? Um, you know, it was, it was fun. Like I, I truly enjoyed Stockton. I worked for two different head coaches in my two years there and Ryan Huska and Kale McLean. Um, we had a blast or I had a blast. I'm sure there were times where I wore on them thin, but like, I'm a big smiley personality, right? Even like wins, losses, because it's just who I am. So I'm sure there were days where we're sitting in the coach's office, the group of four of us and people wanted to punch me in the face because of how much time we were spending together and how jolly I was. But working with guys like Colin Zulianello, Dom Pittis, Kale Ryan, and then Joe Sorella, like I learned so much over my two years there. It was absolutely incredible. Um, and then working for Brad Pascal while I was there, he really allowed me to grow in terms of like, hey, this is your job, figure it out. Like it wasn't like I'm going to be incredibly overbearing and things need to be done this way. It's like, this is your job. This is what the coaching staff expects out of you. This is what I expect out of you. Just make sure it gets done. And and for me, I think that was huge. Like it, it kind of made me reflect on my time at Maine, establishing routine and figuring all that out. But it kind of gave me a little bit more wings for growth. And it was a great opportunity for me. What was it like to come back as the pro scout? Well, I never really scouted. Um, so like my, my job there is like, I was kind of a liaison to the scouts in terms of like making sure that their cell phone plan was working and all that stuff. Um, but the great part about it was, is like, I got to dip my toes in a lot of different fields and talking to guys like Bill Powers and Steve Plo and talking to them about college free agents and players and kind of understanding the life that they were leading and, and what was going on there. So it wasn't more so, so much me scouting. It was more so me being able to pick their brains and kind of just see what they do on a day to day. What was your time like working with the Colorado? Colorado Flames Hockey Club uh do you mean Calgary Flames yes Co yeah Calgary. so I, I I had limited time with them I mean of course like as their AHL affiliate we're we're really into uh, you know sharing data and analytics and going back and forth and them asking for reports and prospect updates but I think the biggest like the coolest experience for me was I got to spend two months every September like with Calgary and that NHL team and seeing how they operate on a day to day and like just the volume of player and workload and all the things that they had to accomplish in that time span with 64 players in their locker room. The second year it was even crazier because the team was going to China. So that was always great. And then development camp was a blast just seeing the new prospects getting to meet and talk with them, understand like kind of what they're doing, running. And, and it was just it, overall, like just working within Calgary's affiliation has just been a great opportunity for me. What was the transition like to now go to the Kansas city Mavericks? I think the biggest, coach? yeah, I think the biggest transition was the first three games when I was in Kansas city, like the game just moves faster when you're not behind a computer screen. Um, it's one of those situations where as the video coach, like you kind of have a bird's eye view on things and the game's a little bit slower and you can see where things are opening up and, and how the game is changing and moving and the directions and trends that like it's kind of taking. It's a lot different when you're sitting now all of a sudden five feet away from it. Like the game's just faster. You're closer to it. So you don't necessarily get the full perspective of an entire rink and where all 10 players are and two goalies. It's more so you're kind of, analyzing like the four on three situation that you can see or the the face off situation or the players that are kind of near you on the rush it just it's a little bit faster it's a little bit different but overall I would say that the overall workload in terms of the amount of work that you need to put into pre-scouting opponents breaking down your own team is finding video and analytics like that to me a lot of that stayed incredibly consistent it was more so just a matter of adjusting to the game speed from that close and that, that ice level. How has your past experience helped you to now where you are now as the assistant coach? I think you can, like for me, I've been able to take things from everywhere. Um, I've been really fortunate to wear a whole bunch of different hats um, in terms of this was my job responsibility here and it 
very differently when I was here and then gone there. But the best part is, is that like, I've been able to take things and experiences from all those different places and kind of carve out what I like, what I don't like. And then in turn coach to those strengths of the things that I enjoy and kind of stay away from the things that I feel like I wouldn't say are a weakness of mine, but things that I don't think necessarily affect the team as much as others do. Um, so it's, it's been a great experience, just the whole journey itself. Um, I think you learn life lessons from every coach that you work with, right? Like red, he really knew how to push you like, and, and it was push you because he wanted to make sure that when you were gone, like when he was no longer around or in the room, like, you have the tools and capabilities to establish your routine. Tom, like he was a fire and brimstone guy and he was a great motivator. And like, I think there were times where like, you're like, Oh my God, Oh my God, this is so much, but there's, there's few people that are as passionate about like hockey and in particular, Bemidji state hockey than Tom's territory. So that was great to learn from like in terms of husk, you learn detail and preparation and, and all that stuff from Brad, you understand communication and, and moving parts and pieces and all that stuff from Kale. It was like, he's one of the most calming presences that I've ever felt in terms of a guy that's steering a ship. So it's one of those things where I've had so many different mentors and leaders and people that did it on so differently that I've been able to take bits and pieces from all of them and really establish something great. Of course, with being the assistant coach, what are some of your game day routines that you have? Oh, man, um, it starts early. So we'll, if, if we're going to start on a game day, I'm usually in the office around 630 or 7 in the morning. Um, and we're going through like I'll go be going through pre-scout with our head coach, Pat O'Had here in terms of what are the clips that we want to show our team going into tonight's game. Um, and then I prepare that video we go and present, we have a morning skate. I, I then go back to my office and I build our my build out and finish building out my power play presentation for that evening for the 10 guys that will be on the power play that evening, just to build out like, Hey, this is what the other team is going to do. This is how they're going to kill penalties. So you kind of have a more specialized program in terms of what you're running for those guys. Try to get a workout in, walk my dog, um, and then head back to the rink around three 30 ish. Um, and then from there, it's kind of like you tighten some stuff up, you button some things up, you post some sheets or game plans that um, you want to make sure that the team is aware of and, and stuff like that so they can read it prior to the game. Uh, then the game happens and chaos ensues for about two and a half hours. And then following the game, I typically try to watch the first and second period over again, um, unless I'm really just angry because like when – you have a bad loss or you don't feel like your team played particularly well. Like you view the game in a different scope than you normally would. So it's not necessarily like giving yourself a fair representation of what that game looks like. So I kind of assess it from there, but I do try and watch the first two periods of that game because typically we're playing the next night against the same opponent or potentially a different opponent. But we want to make sure when those guys show up the next morning at the rink at 10 a.m. that we have our video ready to go. And then it's lather and repeat, kind of like you're showering and, and washing your hair. And all of a sudden, like the game day just becomes Groundhog Day. And like, this is what you do. This is how you do it. This is your routine. And, and overall, like you just try to establish consistency for your players. Of course, with the Kansas City Mavericks, are you affiliated with the NHL team? Yes, we are. With, well, so it's it's been really nice for me because I'm we're, we're affiliated with both Calgary and Stockton. So I've been within the same affiliation now for the past four years. And in terms of like just continuity and connections made, it's been a really good experience for me. What is the process like of being affiliated with Calgary Flames? I think the the hardest part and like this goes for any affiliation is is when you're at the ECHL level, you're not just watching what's going on with the Calgary Flames. You're watching what happens with the Stockton Heat. And the reason that you're watching so closely is not only do you want to make sure that you're preparing your players for if they get a call up or a phone call that says, hey, you're coming to Stockton or Calgary, they're ready to go for that opportunity. 
But the other thing that you have to worry about is what's going on with their team health wise, right? So if a player gets injured in Calgary, the assumption is that a player is now leaving in Stockton to go fill that role in Calgary. Right. And now all of a sudden Stockton's like, Oh boy, I got to take it. I got to take a player from Kansas city. And so now we've got to start looking towards the SPHL and, and other leagues to say, Hey, like we've got a void to fill here in terms of we're losing this player. We've got to bring somebody in. So you're consistently watching, but the nice part for me on top of that though, is like, I've got such great relationships with those guys where I'm able to call Thomas Spear, the goaltending coach and just say, Hey, for your prospects that are down there, what, what do you see in their games? What do they need to work on? Or how do I help them out in that regard? Or, or I could have called Don Pittis and been like, Hey, like this team kills penalties this way. And we're really struggling against it. What, what would you do in this situation? And, and similar with Kale and Joe. And, and then the other thing is, is because we all have such various backgrounds and experiences, like we could always call to get player evaluations and all that stuff done. So it was all great. It was all fantastic. And kind of just being affiliated with that group, it's, it's been real positive for me. And, and I hope they feel the same way the other direction. Of course, with hearing you, can you talk about the process on, let's say, because I assume y'all are a low A team. So the way that it kind of works, if you were to kind of equip, like make it equivalent to uh, baseball, right? Because that's kind of what everyone use, uses. So I think Tampa Bay is the major league team, right? Mm-hmm. And then for the Devil Rays and then, or the Tampa Bay Rays now. And then I believe Durham Bulls is their AAA affiliate, Right. And then I'm not sure who the Durham Bulls are affiliated with, but there's a double A team that's right below them. Right. So that's where we would be in terms of the ECHL to the NHL. Okay. Thank you. Cause that clarifies a lot for my listeners. (laughs) Of course, but what is the process like of seeing those players move up to the next level? Uh, There's nothing better to be honest with you. Um, uh, I think there's two site types of successes, right? It's individual success and then collective success. And I think in terms of like collective success, if we're graduating players to a higher level, like it shows that we're doing something right. Cause there's times throughout the year where you're going to go through a losing skid or you're not going to be in the best frame of mind because of the way things are going. But then all of a sudden, you have a player called up and all of a sudden he's playing in some pretty big minutes or in a pretty heavy role for a team. And you're like, well, I, I did play a part in that. And our team played a part in that. And to me, like it, it brings me individual joy. And I think it just shows collective success of the Mavericks in terms of like, we're graduating players to a higher level. And, and that's where we hope they stick right at the end of the day, we're a developmental league in the ECHL and, and our job is twofold. We have to win games, but at the same token, we have to make sure that when players get a call up, that they're prepared for those opportunities. And and seeing guys called up is the, one of the best feelings in the world. What What is something that you learned now that you didn't know before working in professional sports? Oh, man, um, I'd have to write a book. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot. Like, to be honest my whole life I've been watching sports as a fan. Right. And I think you get bits and pieces in terms of like what all goes into it. But the second you pull back the curtain and you're in it, it's, it's kind of like being in a blender and and there's just so many moving parts and so much going on that I want, I'd rather say that I learn something new every day as opposed to saying like, what's something new that I've learned once just because every day is a new experience. Every day is a different phone conversation or just regular conversation with another person. So I don't, I don't know if I could just narrow it down to one thing other than like the, the, the constant that comes back is if you're a genuine person and you work really hard, you eventually get rewarded for it. And I I've been told that by multiple people. Um, And I think regardless of where I've been or where I've gone, the one staple that's held true is I am who I am as an individual and I work really hard because I've got a goal in mind of where I want to take my career. And 
luckily for me, I've gotten to accrue such great life experiences because of it and then continue to elevate my career the direction that it wants to go. What advice would you have somebody looking to become an assistant coach or coaching in professional sports? Same thing. Work hard. Like (laughs) there's going to be times where uh, you're not going to get a job and it's going to be frustrating and you're going to wonder why and you're going to think, well, I'm more qualified than than that individual. But the biggest thing is you have to keep working and you can't quit because the second you do, you stop doing either one of those things, you're done. Um, so like there are times where it's going to be challenging and there are times where you're going to doubt yourself and you're really going to need to bring yourself out of a tunnel. So uh, the best advice I can give is just keep working hard and stay true to yourself. Where can my listeners find of course, Kansas city Mavericks at on social media and me at? So it's at KC Mavericks on Instagram, Facebook. If you just search Kansas city Mavericks, it should be the first thing that pops up for you. On Twitter, I think it's at KC Mavericks again. And um, and then if you want to catch any of our games or anything like that next season, there's a streaming service that's unbelievable called Flow Sports. That's F-L-O-S-P-O-R-T-S. And there where you can see all of our games live. And the nice thing is, is that there's a whole bunch of different interviews, a whole lot of teams on there. Um, and you can watch any replay as well. Where can my listeners find you at on social media? Um, it's kind of goofy. It's at real Cole Schultz on Twitter. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. Or if they want to connect with me on LinkedIn, it's just K O H L S C H U L T Z. There's not a whole lot of those out there. So I'm sure I'll be the first one that pops up. Thank you again, Cole Schultz for your interview and best of luck in your future with Kansas city Mavericks. Thank you, Brandon. You have a great day, buddy. You too. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Cole, for your interview, and best of luck. Thanks, buddy. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.